And then at 23, we had a family meeting uh, with my family, my nucleus family, my mom, dad, my two sisters. They're like, hey, we found out that pastor has doing this and he's gonna step down. Two or three days later, that Sunday, the pastor up front gives the announcement, he is stepping down. And it was like, boom, gone. My grandfather, gone. My pastor, gone. My leader, gone. And uh, that's tough. <laughs> My real name is Brian Aponte. Uh, the majority of you guys online <laughs> know me as Tommy Royale. I'm an artist. And we're just going to talk a little bit of my life, uh, my testimony, and how is it that I am here and who I am and what I am doing. <laughs> Tell me, how long have you been faithfully walking with Jesus? I would say since I have memory. I've been walking faithfully with Jesus since I could remember. But at the age of, I would say, 11 or 12, I was working I was always in church. At 11 or 12, they put me in youth ministry. Um, and and I, from there, I was, I was, I've been in ministry. What's, what's your religious background? Pentecostal. I don't say Pentecostal, but like Christian. <laughs> yeah, so raised Christian my whole life. So your parents were raised in the church as well? Yes. Oh, actually, no, no. Um, my dad was. My dad was always, his testimony is that he was raised in church, but in the street. You know what I'm saying? Like he eventually just like left God, did his own thing. And then he has an intense, intense testimony. Like he, like God physically came to him and he's like, hey bro, your friends are in jail. Mm. Some have been killed. You need to fix this or else you'll end up one of the two. And then from there he 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 turned his his ways in. And so he was a really good example growing up of what a Christian man is. Mm. Um, it was a really good example of what a imperfect Christian man is because he was really young. Um, I was explaining that He's stepdad, right? But he raised me. He came into my life as I was three, so I consider him my father. But he was 18 when he married my mom, mm. and I was already three. So at 18 year old, imagine having a three year old. So like, uh, Chris, uh, 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 he recently turned Christian too. Like, so was trying to figure this out, trying to figure out how to be a Christian, but how to figure how to figure out how to be a man, mm. but also how to figuring out how to be a father. So it was really there was moments where it was like. Like you knew as a kid too, you know things aren't like I don't know this isn't supposed to be like this. Like, but like he's figuring it this out, and it was, it was a really interesting dynamic we had growing up. Yeah, from your early days of going to the church, what is what was religion to you, or just church? How do you remember it when you think back on it? I would say church for me growing up was, and this is why what I'm going to like we're going to lead into like the biggest thing that happened to my life, why that season was so tough for me. Church for me was um, stability. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was community, it was comfort, having really young parents, a single mom for a portion, and then when the dad came into the picture, they were just, they were just kids. Um, there was a, not a lot of stability. I went to five, six different elementary schools. We're just moving around a lot. And I've seen other kids that have done the same thing and two things happen from what I learned. One, you get really introverted. Or two, what happened with me was you just learn how to, how to talk to everybody. Mm. But with, with moving around so much, the moving houses, moving schools, moving, uh, I, I learned that my one stability was my church. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter where we went to, we always went to the same church. I always had the same pastors. My grandparents were always, you know what I'm saying? So for me, church was comfort, was stability. Uh, was community because uh, it was just the same people around. I never had, I was always envious of those who like, you go into high school and there's homies. They, they, we've been homies since, high, since elementary school. I never had that, you know what I'm saying? But I had people that we've been going to the same church forever. So that's what church was for me. What you said you started to serve in the church at 11 years old. Can yeah. you just talk a little bit more about your role? I think that's pretty incredible. At that age, you're already <laughs> serving. Bro, it's funny because I think back at it, I'm like, bro, I, would, I really wish we had footage of this, but bro, they put me to preach at 11. <laughs> like, no, Bobby, prepare una palabra. You got this. Like, prepare a word for the youth. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to figure this out. But it was mainly like for the first year or two, it was like I was a leader. I had my youth pastor, I was a leader, but it was more like an apprentice situation. Mm -hmm. Like 
at the time it was for the youth, it was pizza parties and games. We're gonna have a game night. Uh, so just preparing things, spreading the word out to friends uh, in school and just try to invite people. And every once in a while, prepare a word at 11. I don't know what I was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, I haven't experienced life, but we're going <laughs> to, but God is, you know I'm saying? My words were very like, hey, God is good mm-hmm. and he loves you. And you know what I'm saying? But like, and just obviously I develop. I feel, I'm really grateful for that because I, I, I don't know, I feel like I was really exposed to that side of ministry at a young age and I, I really I think it, it really helped me understand things now as an adult yeah you know what what can you say that uh you ultimately learned in that in that time serving in the church at that young of an age I learned this is a good thing and a bad thing I feel like it still sticks with me the heart of a servant right I feel like at a young age when you're taught to do things for others like hey we're serving Right, we're emulating God or Jesus. We're emulating Jesus. We're walking like Jesus. Let's let's serve as Jesus would serve. I feel like that's a really good trait to grow into. Uh, it teaches you to be selfless. So that, I learned that. But also, it's good and bad because now I feel like as an adult, it's something I have. I have a great team around me. I have great people around me who are a lot more stern than I am because I have the tendency of always like, I feel like I, I tend to overextend myself a lot mm-hmm. sometimes. And I think back, I'm like, damn, bro, I'm like, I'm not really comfortable doing this. But like I said, yeah, so we have to say, we have to go through it. And it's mm-hmm. just because that whole, like, it's the balance of it, you know? Right. But I think that's being into ministry that young. I think the heart of a servant is something that really has, has stuck with me since then. When did music come into the picture? I fell in love with music with, like both my parents have been always been, again, being young, uh, my mom would show me what she would be listening to. Like my mom was always like into the pop, but also like uh, rap, the reggaeton sing. My dad, when he came in the picture, he showed me his hip hop side, like, because he was Puerto Rican, but raised in, in the States. Mm. So he's like, he would show me like Playero and all those cassettes, right? But then he would also show me like what's happening in hip hop. But then he would play like, uh, and then we were Christian too, so we would play POD and like, mm-hmm. uh, like, you know what he was like. All right, this is this is good music. So, music came at a very young age for me. Like the love of music. Like when did I start writing? I started writing, and I remember this in third grade. Uh, I was I think when nine, uh, and I just, just art, bro. I've always wanted to be some sort of entertainer. Um, I just like creating art and I love entertaining. So I was like writing music. I wanted to be a Disney Channel star because <laughs> I was always watching. Uh, I was always on Disney Channel. But like, bro, I think like nine is the earliest uh, I could think of that I just wanted to do art. Did you ever use those talents at your church or did you ever get the chance to display those talents at the church? Oh, 100%. I was, I was, my first concert was the Cara a Cara, Mani Montes and Funky concert and we did the what is the life house i don't know if you guys uh that was back then but life house uh play those who are christian you guys know if you guys are raised christian you know uh but i did like mani monte Entre Bien y Mal. i was rapping at church uh christmas specials i would do christmas specials like you know i'm saying once the church found out what i like to do they they put me in there quick to uh <laughs> like their token rapper as a, I was i was like 9 10 11 12 13 but it was like every christmas i had a special now you said that there was a pivotal point in your life. What was that point and if you could just expand on what happened? Yeah, bro. So this is a part where I, so this is the hardest part to talk about because this is so I uh grew up in church. Church was stability for me. Church was comfort. Church was my grandparents. My 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 dad was a great father. He still is a great father, a great friend but he was also very young. So there's certain parts, certain things that I'm like, that my pastor was able to teach me, you know, uh, like how to work a certain way, how to walk a certain way, but also it be Christ-centered. And so it's like, I don't understand this, but it's like, oh, but like, here's here's why. And I, I just learned to be a certain way. I learned I learned a lot through my pastor, right? So he was a good example of like, what a, a man should be in Christ, but also a man should be for his family and also, a public figure because he had several published books he has oh he has several published books he has his church he's a, an attorney uh he has a the first time i ever seen a smart house i'm like bro what the heck is this like for me it was like this is it he's a uh, uh, puerto rican excellence <laughs> you know so just growing up in this atmosphere i learned a lot very important for me now 
I hit a season where between 20 to 23, there was just this, a season of like, there's not a lot of growth happening. I feel like growth within me, growth within my now wife, like she would talk to me, like, bro, I feel like I'm not really receiving. I'm like, I know, but like, I don't know what it is, but let's keep pushing. We were in charge of the youth ministry with like two or three other leaders, but we're like, maybe it's the youth. Maybe it's like, let's let's change a few things. Maybe it's how we're approaching it. Maybe it's the word. So we're just trying to figure out what's, what to change for it, it to grow. And then at 23, we had a family meeting uh, with my family, my nucleus family, my mom, dad, my two sisters. They're like, hey, we found out that pastor has doing this and he's gonna step down. Two or three days later, that Sunday, the pastor up front gives the announcement, he is stepping down. And it was like, mm. boom, gone. My grandfather, gone. My pastor, gone. My leader, gone. And uh, it's tough. <laughs> and it was a season thing. It's, I'm still healing. <sighs> Sorry, you can take your time. So it was a, a season where like literally like everything I had, all the stability I had, it just left. And it was weird because it was my only like, again, moving around a lot as a kid, there was no stability. And then the one stability I had just like just disappeared. And that was tough. Mm. Um, so literally when I tell you overnight, it was like, hey, he's gone. What are we going to do? And it was like, are we gonna keep the church going or are we just gonna leave the church? And we just, we voted on it. And at 21, bro, at 21, me and 10 other people were given the church. And I literally became like, and it was a group effort, right? There was what, 11, 12 of us that were leading it now. But for me, it was like at 21, in the course of five or six days, I was given the church, a hundred something people. and. Bro, that was tough because I, I mean, granted, I was fresh out of, out of college. I had my, my passion for music. I wanted to keep doing music. I was working at a full-time job. I was a manager. And it was like I was giving my 100% to being a manager at this job mm. while finding time to pursue my music, pursue what I, what I want to do. Uh, and, and it's not just a passion. It's also a calling because I understood that God gave me like God answered my prayers and, and I like, I know what, I, what, what my music stuff, I know it comes from God, so I'm gonna pursue this. And it was tough balancing those two things. And then this happens and it was like, dang, bro. So now I have a church that I gotta take care of. I play drums at the church. So it was like, I have to do these two things, full-time manager. Um, I was on salary, bro. So I was at home. I would be 12 hour shift, six days a week, come home. They call me, I have to dip mm. and then practice the songs to play on Sunday, prepare a word for the youth that Thursday or that Wednesday, and then prepare a word for Sunday. Wow. And it was just like, bro, it was a season of like, or it was, it was hell, man. It was just going back to what I was telling you earlier of like what I learned through ministry and being in ministry was that, that selfless act of like giving, right? Of the heart of a servant, bro, it was just constantly giving mm. to everyone, giving at my job, giving at my, what I wanna do and giving at the church to where like we did that for six months man and it was the hardest six months of my life it was the darkest season after six months we we, we voted uh to make the, i think the hardest decision of my life and it was just for us to say we, we can't keep doing this we ended up all voting on just closing the church mm. but, like we can't um i'm not being fed and i don't think what we're giving to the people who are still attending is being fed with the when the pastor dipped we lost the building so like during the week, we were trying to figure out which hotel has an available bar room for us to set up church and tear down church that Sunday. And it was, it was tough, man. And it was, yeah. And I, I, I wasn't coping the, the right way, but then again, I wasn't being fed, but also finding ways to feed others. And it was, it was a really tough season for me. Now on the bright side, because there is a, <laughs> a glimmer of hope uh, through that, the church, closed we voted for the church to close and through that i had a friend at work uh his name is ruben he recently passed away through covid but he through that whole season he was with me and he was like hey bro like i have a church uh to go to that like we would like for you to come to like we're just starting up uh sorry 
our first service is going to be there. I was like, bro, I can't, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm way too invested in my church. And at the time, it was literally, I, and they always say, like, bro, you're not that important. Like, in the, in the Christian way, it's like, bro, trust me, like, you could take, like, now I know, like, you could take a step back. It's a healthy practice, right? Like, right. you train others to, that's the, the quality of a leader, to train others to delegate so that you could take a break. But at that time, it was literally, if I didn't show up on Sunday, the church can't, can't happen, you know? Like, mm. I couldn't. But when we voted for the church to like, like, bro, I can't do this anymore. That next Sunday, I was at, at, at my church where I'm at now, which is Journey Church. I was there that next Sunday as like a spectator. I was like, I don't want, I've been, I've been in ministry since, since I can remember. I want to sit down, bro. I'm not playing drums. I'm not leading anybody. I had the youth follow me. Um, but it was like that moment of like, hey, bro, I'm, I'm not your leader anymore. Mm -hmm. And that was also awkward too. Like, because the church disappeared and all these people needed somewhere to go, mm -hmm. you know? And it was a season where like the second time where I remember God being real to me. Cause I had two, I had a crossroad. It was like, hey, I could leave church and never go back because I just wasted 23 years of my life. Um, and everything that I thought was true, a lie, gone. Or God, I need you to move. I need you to work. I need you to guide me because like, this is, this is scary. I don't know what, what's true anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't have a church at the moment. Granted, I just started visiting this church, right? But it's like what I knew to be church just crumbled. And I feel like I, I just, I sat down for a little bit and, and just, and just, I received, man. And it was, it felt really good. And I saw God, like, God became real in a sense to where I didn't have somebody telling me who God was. I didn't have anybody teaching me about God. I didn't have a place to go figuratively anymore at least the place that my tabernacle or my house of worship was gone was destroyed so i had to create that you know so it became it went from me a mediator or the medium and god to like me and god directly and i think god really like showed who he was um in that season and 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 yeah man i was able to I don't know. I was able to move. I was like to grow in a way that I wasn't growing before that stagnant uh, season that I was in. <laughs> Obviously, there was a breakthrough. There was a breaking, but also a breakthrough as well. I was able to break that roof. It was tough. It hurt. Still healing from it because there's a lot of scars. But I feel like through that, I was able to elevate past where I was, where I was at. I think the Bible's full of examples of people see God when they're desperate. Right. I think God is it sh is shown when you, when you're desperate for Him, you know it's hard to, and it sucks, right? But we don't when things are good, we don't seek God, mm -hmm. right? We should, but we don't. But when we're like, I have, I'm at the end of my ropes. I don't see, I don't f have an exit strategy. There's no fire escape. Everything is literally ablaze. I think that's when God uh, shows Himself, um, and was in our imperfection, He's made perfect. So during that season, I was just desperate to seek. An answer. I know, I've never been one to question God. Like, yo, God, why is this? This like, mm. I've never been filled with resentment towards God. I've always questioned Him, but like, as a son, like, why are you doing this? Or why is this? Like, what's the reason for this? And man, I feel like I broke a lot of. I feel free now. Like, it's funny because you don't feel like you're oppressed until you receive freedom. Mm. I think when you're free, you look back and be like, wow, I lived in those conditions, mm -hmm. right? that breakthrough kind of, I feel like has put me in a position to be an example and lead others to what freedom in Christ really looks like, right? Mm -hmm. To walk in love, but sanctified, right? Stay sanctified, but love, live through love, walk through love and not necessarily hold on to these like laws that have been placed by a leader mm -hmm. uh, 30, 40 years ago, yeah. you know? Um, what do you think what do you think the the lord is now in this season of your life you're 28 now 28 years old um you did 11 11 years of 11 of, years of, of ministry youth, of youth yeah. ministry i think ministry in general yeah ministry yeah <laughs> um now you're doing music mm -hmm. you're really good at it thank you <laughs> what is the lord trying to do what do you feel the lord is leading you into what is he what is the vision the calling that he's placed in your life yeah, the vision is take the God aspect out of the equation, right? Jesus as the person. I feel like how Jesus, there's a beauty in how Jesus walked, mm -hmm. like as a man. And I feel like God is really putting me in, in positions where I could be an example of mm -hmm. that 
you know, not like trying to sound self-righteous or anything, but like to show what real love looks like, to show what freedom looks like, to show what like how to speak as a Christian without being self-righteous, without mm-hmm. being certain ways that we know, we all know. I don't even have to speak into like what church hurt really is, uh, but it's it's real. You know what I'm saying? I've gone through I've, the majority of us who like been in church as long as I have, have gone through it, but like to show like this grace and being yourself and being how God has created you to be, but still striving to walk in love. Mm. And God's been opening doors. And the vision is just that. I think just create good art, create good music, create good videos, create good graphics, create, be a leader in design, be a leader in art, mm. be the best at it, excel, right? We're called to move in excellence and not necessarily worry about what you're supposed to do or supposed to look or so how you're supposed to speak within the Christian world. Just like, just be free and walk. And I feel like a lot of barriers have been, I think start, I start off with a lot of like uh, pushback, mm. but now I've noticed patterns like, oh, cool. That wasn't, you guys weren't doing that before, but there's freedom now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think just, just be an example of what it is to just like, yo, just create. If your life is sanctified, if your life is, if you're worried, if you're tending your well, you don't have to worry about what's coming out of it, you mm. know? And I think that's where I'm at right now. Right. It's like when the when it talks about um, your mouth speaks what the what's hidden in your heart. One hundred percent. Right. It's it's what's inside, not yeah. exactly what people are seeing from the outside. Yeah. Um. When you look back at these your lifetime right now, right? Yeah. God willing, you have a lot more years to come. <laughs> um. What can you say in a nutshell that Jesus has done for you up to date? Yo, Jesus has been faithful. And everything, in finances, like I do full-time music and uh, my wife's a teacher. Neither one of us have <laughs> a job that's like, you know, and and, and you know, she's, she studied and did her thing, but teachers don't get paid like hmm. what I personally think they deserve, you know, but like, and me, I am an artist, full-time, bro. Like when is my next paycheck? I mean, the royalties check comes in, but between that, shows, merch, I don't know, and I'm not, big big like that just yet god willing we're working towards it but in the cool. meantime like i'm growing you know what i'm saying and there's been seasons where like it's been tough it's been dry but like walking on water isn't meant to be easy mm-hmm. right so what has jesus done for me god bro, the lord has shown out in my life in a way to where like i can't deny him and there's been times where I'm like i don't know man I, god like there's been times where i question god you know i was like god like are you really like and then i think back i'm like <laughs> I mean, he's done X, Y, and Z for me, right? And he's just been faithful. He's kept his promises. You know what I'm saying? I've been promised this, I've been promised that, and just seeing and looking back, I'm like, oh, dang, bro, you really did open those doors, and you really did do that. And his favor, bro, the favor that God has shown in my life personally, and I'm just talking out of experience because I believe we all have favor, but like from what I've seen is like something to brag about. You know? I mean, there's, there's levels to that favor for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Touch on that really quick, though, about the favor of God in, in your life. What, how have you seen it manifest in your life? Bro, just certain things happen. I'm just like, bro, this has happened to everybody. Like, surface level, let's talk about music, right? A lot of the majority of people who watch this or probably click on it and know me for my music. I've been writing music since nine, but like, I started, I said at 20, at 26. I, in 2019, in 2019, I said, hey, I'm going to, I felt it in my heart. I prayed about it. I fasted for three, I fasted for 21 days, three days into it. God said, hey, let's do it. Quit your job. I'm like, let's keep this. Uh, I got, I got a few more days left. Let's, uh, but like I felt it and, and I pulled the trigger and I, I stepped out of the boat and I put my feet on the water and I've been walking ever since, right? Seven months of quitting my job and doing music, I get picked up to do a tour with one of my favorite artists who's never heard of me prior. You know, or maybe he has, but I don't know. But I've just been a, I was a fan. You know what I'm saying? I get a face FaceTime call. He's like, bro, what the heck? Like we're talking, and then I get on a tour, sold out 10 out of the 12 dates. And bro, I'm new to this, you know? And it wasn't a, a effort of mine alone, right? It was like a group effort, but like seeing like yo, God, you chose me. Mm. Like, I'm here. Mm. Nobody else is here. I'm here. And this is a, a small example. And, and, and I mean, we could talk about other things, but just like seeing how God's just been like opening doors and the whole, the Netflix movie we were talking about earlier, like the Netflix movie, like anybody else could have been on it, bro. I got five songs on a Netflix movie. Say but the it, name just so people know. Yo, shout out uh, Blue Miracle. <laughs> but it's like, 
it's little things like that, bro, that you just think back and like, that is favor, you know? And sometimes mm. like, cause this, it's ministry, but it's business. You know what I'm saying? We strategize, we work. There's a lot of things that go behind the scene, behind the scenes. So we could take these things for granted, mm. but like sitting down and, and counting your wins, bro, you really see like, oh God, you really did that. Like wow. you've been good. You've been faithful. A little bit of God's favor. <laughs> uh, that's powerful. The fact that you fasted too and you really heard from God, you know, shows the power of like, man, really just surrendering it all to him and allowing him to guide us. Yeah. And obviously we see the fruit of it. So, man, thank you for sharing that. For anybody that's like watching right now, um, whoever's watching or listening to your testimony, um, what are some last words that you can offer to them? I would say two things. One, just be true to who you are. Be true to yourself. I think there's a beauty in personality. God created you the way you are for a specific reason. And and, and I know that's like a, a juxtaposition, not juxtaposition, but it's like, because people are like, yeah, God created you to be who you are, but God wants you to change and grow. Like true, I do believe that there's a constant search for excellence that we have to do on a day to day, but there's a beauty in all that you've gone through. Like your trials, your hurt, your pain has shaped you to be a certain way. And I think there's a beauty in that and be true to who you are, but also have faith in what God is doing in your life. Have have reckless faith, have blind faith, have ignorant faith, you know, to where like, I trust God, to where people feel like you're being almost irresponsible because <laughs> it makes people uneasy when you're just like, I just trust in God. I'm working, right? But I trust that God's doing something. Um, I think that that's a formula for for beautiful things to happen. Trust that God made you a certain way and trust that God is working a certain way in your life. 